the history of Newfoundland and Labrador is kind of like a roller coaster with a lot more downs than ups and definitely a lot of twists and turns and loop-de-loops. To illustrate what's happened over the past three decades, I'm going to tell you the story of Newfoundland using seven numbers and just basically explain how Newfoundland is the way it is today. 1992. If you're from Newfoundland, the year 1992 probably means something very specific to you. 1992 was the year the Northern Cod Moratorium was enacted. I've seen numbers ranging widely from about 13,000 to as much as 30,000 direct fishing related jobs that were lost in a single day. Jobs were lost all over Canada, but Newfoundland was the epicenter of the largest mass layoff in Canadian history where three quarters or more of the jobs lost were lost. And it was already a province that was struggling economically at that point. It's not like we were in a good position to begin with. If you know anything about Newfoundland history, you probably know 1992. It's probably already in your head. If you're just learning about Newfoundland now by clicking on this video, 1992, for your reference, is an absolute benchmark year for the trajectory of Newfoundland and Labrador moving into the future. You got 1497, the year that immigration basically started in North America, or at least in northern North America. You got 1855 when Newfoundland was granted responsible government and we were able to kind of manage our own affairs. 1933 is the year we lost that. 1949 is the year we joined Canada as a province. These are all very, very important years in the history of Newfoundland. And I know I'm biased by saying this because I lived through 1992, but I feel like 1992 being the year that we almost lost everything is the most significant year in our overall history. 49,012. So 1992 was the year the moratorium was enacted and it was initially meant to last for two or three years and the idea was we'd give the, the cod a break and hopefully they'd rebuild the stocks and we'd get back to fishing. Well, it's 32 years later and the moratorium is still in effect. But as bad as the announcement in 1992 was, and as bad as losing 30,000 jobs in a single day was, it wasn't like a one-day event where, okay, the worst is behind us. The worst didn't actually come until a few years later. So basically, this announcement wasn't a surprise. It's something that people say should have been done years before, but it was fought for political reasons, for economic reasons. And Anyway, the announcement was issued with a few safety measures kind of in the works. There was a safety net kind of as much as the federal government of Canada was willing to offer coincided with the announcement. Some of these safety measures, while really inadequate, they did soften the blow of losing the job and, and families didn't have to worry about where the next meal was coming from. But these safety measures came with expiry dates attached. After the expiry of some of these programs, that's when a lot of additional problems set in, and in my opinion, the worst was yet to come. There was a five-year period between 1996 and 2001 when 49,012 people left Newfoundland looking for work, myself included. Of that 49,000 plus people, about 30,000 moved to Ontario or Alberta alone. So two provinces in Canada received 30,000 working age men and women who contributed to the economies of those two provinces and, and helped those two provinces boom while Newfoundland and Labrador was left figuring out what we're going to do. Please keep in mind that 49,000 individuals is a lot for any population to lose at one time, but there was only about 570, 580,000 people in all of Newfoundland and Labrador at the time. So this is close to a 10% drop in population over a five year period. Young people, working age people leaving the province looking for work is devastating immediately, but we're still feeling the effects today of people who left and started families elsewhere, people that contributed for 30 years to other economies and not contributing to the economies of Newfoundland, really. 147.50. If the worst period of Newfoundland history lasted between 1996 and 2001, it's not like we were out of the woods beyond 2001, but things did seem to improve. The flood of Newfoundlanders leaving Newfoundland didn't exactly stop after 2001, but it did seem to slow down a little bit. By 2007, 2008, there was still a declining population, but it seemed to have bottomed out around 2006 and slowly started to increase just a tiny, tiny bit. Coinciding with that mass evacuation of Newfoundland of 
working age men and women, the Hibernia oil platform came online, 1997. Between 1997 and 2008, I believe the deal for Hebron was struck in 2008. It took a lot longer for it to actually start producing oil. But with a big change in the economy of Newfoundland, there were nuggets of hope sort of sprinkled in. The oil and gas industry had come online. So confidence was building despite everything else that was happening in Newfoundland and Labrador. There were glimmers of hope for the future. Now you can say what you want about oil and gas. I'm not talking about whether or not overall it was a good thing, is a good thing, will be a good thing. You can certainly argue about the value of the oil and gas industry in Newfoundland beyond dollars and cents. But if this didn't happen when it did for the history of Newfoundland, I, I don't know how much worse things would have been after 2001. But if you want to talk about the roller coaster ride of Newfoundland history, particularly over this three specific decades that I'm talking about in this video, this was the highest point of that roller coaster, I think for sure. The price of Brent crude oil peaked in 2008 at $147.50 per barrel. Offshore Newfoundland oil isn't exactly Brent crude, but it's close enough to gauge the price per barrel against the price of Brent crude. And this is significant because we had in 2008 three operating oil fields. One more came on after. We had a lot of money in the province at that time for the first time in a long time. There was a lot of good stuff that happened between say 2008 and 2013 and services were improved and facilities were built and things happened and it wasn't all like the money was completely wasted. But outside of some of the good that was done, the rest of the money was pretty much completely wasted. The people that were running the province acted like a, a 19 or 20 year old with the first credit card. The highs were nice, but they didn't last. This isn't all doom and gloom. This, and this is a pretty dark history when we start this three decade period, but this was a real highlight, a real moment where it felt like we were actually in the clear. There's the whole have and have not province thing that is pretty clear in a lot of Newfoundlanders minds because we're told forever we're a have not province. Around 2008, 2010, I can't remember when exactly this was, but a mini dealership opened up in St. John's. And I remember driving down Columbus Drive and seeing a billboard that was advertising for this dealership. And there was a picture of the mini on there with one word. It just said, have. And everybody who saw that knew what that meant. We were now a have province. We crossed that line. The future was going to be bright. But unfortunately, when we gauge our future against the price of oil, 2014 told us that that was a mistake. 1700. So the price of oil dropped in 2014. 2015, we had probably the roughest budget of my lifetime, and it was a pretty miserable time. And it was like whiplash, like three years, two years before we were riding high, thinking like we're in the money now. And then this happens, and a new government was introduced into the province, and they were talking about cutting services and raising taxes and introducing new fees and all kinds of measures that made it seem like this is going to be a bad time. The gains that Newfoundland experienced because of an improving economy over about a decade were almost wiped clean. Population started to drop again 2015, 2016, and it seemed like, okay, we didn't learn anything from our history, and this was actually who we are and what we deserve. But the worst of that situation didn't last for too long. That was a big blip on the radar, but it was a blip on the radar. By 2017, things had started to calm down a bit. Again, it wasn't smooth sailing, but things improved enough that people started to move to Newfoundland again. A few people were moving home, but what was starting to happen that really never happened before was immigration was a consideration in Newfoundland. There were a few new programs introduced federally and provincially that made Newfoundland a more intriguing destination for potential newcomers to Canada to, to set up a home in Newfoundland and Labrador. And in 2017, the provincial government had set a stretch goal to reach 1,700 landed permanent residents by 2022. Now, 1,700 permanent residents, please understand, is about half of the number of permanent residents that land in Ontario any given week. But 1,700 was a significant increase on what Newfoundland could expect forever. We barely broke the 1,000 permanent residents landing in Newfoundland mark in a year up to this point. But things were improving and people were choosing Newfoundland. And if you watch any of my videos, you already know that I believe that's a good thing. That goal of 1,700 people choosing to move to Newfoundland from outside of Canada, there was a five year lead in to make the, the goal for 2022. Well, by 2019, we had already surpassed that goal. 
and by the time 2022 rolled around, that goal of 1700 had been doubled. That goal has been reached and surpassed. Now the goal is somewhere around 5,000 new permanent residents yearly, pegged approximately to 1% of the population, which is in line with pretty much everywhere else in Canada. One, I'm talking about the roller coaster that is Newfoundland history over the past three decades through the many downs, the few big ups, and then the loop-de-loops. The 2021 census, covering the five-year period from 2016 to 2021, showed that there was one province in Canada that actually lost population, of course, Newfoundland and Labrador. This information came out in 2021 and it kind of flew in the face of a lot of the news that was coming out about people moving to Newfoundland. The important thing to clarify related to that is that this was a five year period between 2016 and 2021. And 2016 was a bad year for population growth in Newfoundland. 2017 was a little bit better than 2016, but it would not be considered a good year by many people. COVID happened during this period and there was virtually no movement into Newfoundland for that year. 2021 it was actually not too bad but COVID was still a factor in 2021. So the numbers show and the numbers are true that the population of Newfoundland actually contracted over that five-year period and it was the only province in Canada that experienced that. So what is going on here? Are things getting better? Are things getting worse? You can't look at any individual moment in time along this three-decade timeline and get a clear picture of what is actually happening. 50. Are people coming or are people leaving? When people come, are they staying? But in 2022, it was announced that the enrollment in K-12 schools in Newfoundland had increased for the first time in 50 years. 50 years of declining enrollment from a peak, I believe in 1972, of close to 200,000 students in K-12. Now the announcement in 2022 of the first increase in 50 years doesn't mean we're back to 1972 levels at all. I saw a quote that the K to 12 enrollment in Newfoundland is not even quite as high as the K to four enrollment number in 1972. So it's been a steady decline. This is the first year that we've seen the increase. So there's a long way to go to get back to those numbers. But 2023 was the second year that we had some increase in numbers. Is this gonna continue? Who knows? But this is a good sign that there's more young people in the K-12 system in Newfoundland and Labrador in 2023 than there was in 2020, in 2015, for the first point in 50 years. 540,418. As of October 1st, 2023, the most recent number that I could find, the population of Newfoundland and Labrador stood at over 540,000 people. This is very good news. The population seems to be growing again, but it all feels so fragile. I point out that it's been a roller coaster and so many things are affected by external factors that we have no control over. I don't know where we're gonna be a year from now, let alone 10 years from now. But the thing that gives me hope here is that every five years, there's a census. And when the information from the census is released, it coincides with population projections. I talk about a lot of numbers in this video, so I'm gonna try and make this as concise as possible. But in 2001, the projections went out to 2016. The optimistic projection for population in 2016 was 513,000. The actual population was about 520,000. The most recent population projections were issued before the pandemic. And it made really big news around Canada, especially in Newfoundland and Labrador, around 2019. And the population projections showed a peak population in 2019 of around 525,000 and declining numbers every year with some projections showing a population of about 480,000 people. None of the projections showed an increase in population leading up to 2024. Now this all feels very fragile. We don't know what's going to happen a year from now, let alone a decade from now but no projection showed a population of 540,000 people in Newfoundland as recently as 2019. There's still a long way to go. There's still a lot of external factors that shape our future. This video is about a look back to the last 32 years. I don't know what we need to do to maintain this momentum that we're experiencing currently. The world has completely changed since COVID-19. 
Newfoundland is changed because of COVID-19. There are a lot of reasons for optimism in Newfoundland and Labrador that weren't really known back you know, a decade ago. But there's also a lot of reason to doubt a lot of the things that are talked about that are going to benefit Newfoundland in the future. We don't know what's going to happen. But by looking back over about 30 years, over three full decades, and determining what got us from 1992 to 2024, we can kind of gain a little bit of hope by knowing that the projections haven't come to fruition. The worst projections haven't actually come true in any case. If YouTube is still around in 30 years, I'll come back and do an update. I'll let you all know kind of where we're at in terms of the province overall. For now, I can just say stay tuned. I think the next five, 10 years in Newfoundland and Labrador are going to be pretty interesting.